all right welcome back if you're just joining us we're still on the newspaper review on quest today and like i said earlier on we have four newspapers for review today so far we've reviewed two newspapers which is the guardian and the nation newspaper and right now we have the punch and the vanguard to look into and yes i still have comrade if you're dumb with me in the studios you know highlighting telling us more on the headlines that made it to the front pages of the dailies and yes if you're just joining us uh, well you still have two newspapers uh, to, to join us on. Yes, let's go straight back into the newspapers. Comrade, are you ready? Very ready. Your wish is my command. All right. The first paper, uh, rather the next paper for review right now will be the punch. And on the punch newspaper, all right, the headline that says Nigerians seek relief as states get 3.3 trillion naira allocations. We have two writers that says protesters lament rising inflation and governors rally federal government to avert food crisis. And also states and local governments uh, receive 3.3 received 3.3 trillion naira july to december and also quality of life degenerating residents say yes more details on this on page two and page page uh, 21 of the punch newspaper moving away from that and above the mass head we have seen it to raise customs five trillion naira revenue target and i wonder how much they want to increase it to but if you want to know more on that you can go to page 29 and also the punch still has a, the story that made around uh on the on the Guardian and the Nation, it says Tinubu and Abiodu mourn as Jimmy Sholanke dies at 81. Yes, we said earlier on me, he's so rest in perfect peace. Yeah. Get more details on that on page 29 of the punch. Nine, Naira weakens at parallel markets and rises at official window. It's making it to page 26. And also, police comb Kogi Forest as government abducts 14 Abuja bound travelers. Yes, more details on this on page four and five. And uh, well, for the picture of the day on the front page of Punch, the headline there states Cancer. Biden and Sunak and other world leaders sympathize with King Charles. Yes, uh, making a rounds on the dailies as well, but you can get more details on that on page 20 of the Punch newspaper, The Nation. Moving above the masthead, we have Oyo Kaduna Cross River to share 500 and 40 million dollar AFDB funds. Yeah, you can read, read more on that on page four. And also, Jimmy Shulanke dies oh, at 81. Yes, means he so rest in peace. This is more of a celebration. Yes, and uh, like I said, get more details on that. that. He went home. Yeah, he went home. Yeah, I can't really coin it well, but like I said, get more details on that on page three. Supply hitches uh, disrupt petroleum distribution in Lagos. It's making it to page seven, and on still still on page seven, federal government offers two bonds. Uh, what read both stories on page seven of the Nation newspaper. Moving on to his security, he says NCC and security operators working to tackle challenges. You can read all of this on page twenty-eight. And protest rocks Mina. We have uh, the governor saying people mopping up food items to create scarcity. Uh, well, get more details on this on page two. Ref uh, Forex reforms attracting FDI, says Cardoso. It's also making it there on the front page of the nation, but you can read more on that on page two. And also, Navy arrests Spain bound stowaways is uh, making it to page five. Uh, of the nation newspaper well you can that's much we can take on the front page of the nation newspaper and we before we go further on that i think we should just first of all look at the headlines that we've taken on the front page of the guardian and also the front page of the nation let's start with the nation newspaper because that is the, the last paper we took the headline there is quite, quite catchy you know efcc freezes three billion naira trace to sirika's brother's account and uh, it says uh, ex minister civil servant sibling failed to execute 8.06 uh, billion naira contracts. Well, yes, this is working, Comrade, wouldn't you say? Yes, Miriam, I quite agree with you. And again, too, let me still tell you, uh, welcome back to this table. And mm. beautiful morning and good week ahead of you. Yeah, thank you very much. The ESC, they are working. We are we quite agree with that. But it's not the beginning of the job that owns the job, but the person that finishes it. So you're talking, maybe you're talking about the judiciary right now? Exactly. When they take this matter to the courts, at the end of the day, they will be granted bail, and they will have to either go for a plea bargain and uh, find them some little token, and then they are back to their houses and they begin to enjoy So at money. this point now, are we saying, or are you saying that it's as though the judicial system is not working, and, 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 and you know, just publicizing this 
sort of situation on the newspapers yeah, is, is the, enough punishment for the victims. Because if you said the judicial system is not working, and each time we come up on the papers, on the dailies, and we see EFCC does this, EFCC arrests this person, EFCC freezes his account, EFCC does... And that's where the story ends. And we say the punishments we really have in Nigeria for people who, you know, scored these major publications. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. Look at the man that took 23.3 billion. What did they do to him? They asked him to pay back 250 million, and he played back in of about 250,000 naira. What happens to the rest of the money? I read this morning, MDAs paid 159 billion into private accounts. Who owns the private accounts? Who are the people that did it? And are they going to retrieve their money? And if they did, if they do, are they going to punish those people? Hmm. The questions are very many. It is only the small thieves that are punished. I'm very surprised that uh, we don't have uh, laws for the for the big boys in the society. Hmm. Now you have told us that. Uh, the contracts of about eight point something billion were not executed. Three billion traced to the siblings of an ex-minister, and tomorrow they would do everything possible, run around, catch them, get them to the to the court. The lawyers will come and they will pass judgment, or uh, they, they will go and argue. They, my client is innocent until he's proven guilty. I apply for his bail. They bail him. He goes home. He comes back the following day. Mm. Please, okay, so uh, what would you say is actually the problem with our judicial system here in Nigeria? Because it's, uh, we can see uh, ESCC, you know, will bring uh, uh, someone who has allegedly committed an offense of stealing or stuff like that, and then we don't see them being prosecuted. What they, is they, withholding the judiciary from actually performing this? It business? has to do with the level and integrity of those people sitting at the bar. If, 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 if the integrity is so I'm uh, questionable. They will have to pass that pass that for uh, judgment. Mm. If you look at what happened in the political uh, say, scene, you, the, a, a court in Lagos will grant or will give a judgment. A court of the same appellate jurisdiction in Kaduna will, will give, give a, a different, a different, different judgment. One. They will take it to Calabar. That one too will So it's more of like a judgment. moral issue. It's a moral issue. Mm. More or less like it's not it's even a moral issue. You see, the ESC should be commended for the job they are doing. Yeah. But I think there are too many loopholes in the law that they are capitalizing on. If you start a job beautifully well and it is not properly executed, and it's as good as not doing a job at all. Two weeks ago, you know, when the uh, Nations Cup started in uh, Ivory Coast, and they asked uh, this Nigerian defender, I think it was Simon or Moses something, he said, Look, we play well in the defense, we defend well. Ask Osime why they are not scoring goals because we are protecting our own goal area, they should ask them. So, the, in this situation, the EFCC are the defenders. The judiciary are the attackers. Mm. So if the if the EFCC from the background are doing so much well, and the people who are to execute are not executing, mm. at the end of the day, it makes the people who are actually after these corrupt officers to be lazy. Mm. All right, let's move away from that to another headline that made the rounds both on the Guardian and the Nation newspaper. Jimmy Sholanke dies mm. uh, at 81, and like you mm. said, he go he went he, home. He went home. He didn't yes. die. Uh, you know, those are the type of death we are uh, we are looking up to. Not that somebody dies at the age of 30, 40, 50, and they have a very good caption, gone too soon. Thank God for life well spent. If you die at 40 and you are thanking God for life well spent, one of the men that dies for at... For those uh, who don't know who Jimmy Sholanke is, can you please... Is Jimmy Sholanke is one of the brightest stars that ever rose in the acting uh, art industry. That is uh, the, the acting uh, scene, the, whole, the Nollywood. In fact, those are the that are supposed to actually be referred to as the real, the real legend in the Nollywood uh, field. Mm. He was a writer. He was a playwright, he was an, act, uh, he was an actor, he did several things, he probably was into music, mm. you know, all this continental local music, mm. that's why you know Jimmy Chola and Kepo, mm. and when he sings in those days with that his local flute, you must be forced to listen to what the man is saying. Well, he has mm. gone home as it is, yes, making he's so, so rest, rest in, in peace. perfect peace. Let's move over to the Guardian newspaper, the headline there too, quite an interesting one. I know you were even involved I in involved. this business. Yes, yeah, it says building materials on labor spike construction costs by 200%. Comrade, mm. what have you experienced so far, you know, when it comes to building materials and of course labor in the construction field? You know, if you talk of actually building, building materials, we still we still live in the past. We are supposed to have matured to a point that most of the things we use are supposed to be locally sourced. But we still go in most cases after some of these imported materials. Mm. What stops us from establishing the industries that will produce those things here? And in the Nigeria situation, like uh, last uh, late last month, yes, a bank of cement was going to 5,800. 5, but as of two days ago, when I called, they said it was not... Oh, it is. I don't know whether it has even gone up again because I've not called today. But it's now 7,000 naira with a few change on top of it. 
because the rate at which people are building is astronomically high. If, if, and if sorry, so we cut, so cut you short there. Now, if you're saying that a bag of cement sells for seven thousand naira, do, do, does this not mean that we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, well, on how do I put it now, buildings that are not well built? due to you the know, fact that people you, are trying to you, economize on the products they're using to build their mat the, the, the you, materials you, using to build using to build these houses. I would not say I would not uh, agree with that one, Nigeria. Mm. Because the more this mater building materials go up, the more money that is being put to the economy illegally. Don't forget the car that is in circulation today, more than half of it are not from the central are not from the central post. That is the treasury. We have too much illegal money in circulation that the government does not even know the source. You can imagine somebody, like I know somebody came to build a house and said they up to this level is also amount of money. The guy paid the, so much money to the contractor's account. I don't want to hear anything. Give me, give me the best. Much more money is coming through the hands of these boys. And they call them the Yahoo boys, the eldest and others. And those are the people that are actually piloting the economy of the nation today. Though it's an illegal business. But if you remove that illegality now that you don't want to do anything with those things, I bet you very nothing will work. So we're we very going to see cases of uh, dilapidated buildings, buildings falling to the ground <coughs> because of the fact that because of the cost of uh, building materials what, now what actually, are inside. What is actually causing most of those collapse uh, building uh, problem is that mm. the owners of the buildings themselves, you should tell them if you give them the quotation that this is what I want, mm. they will tell you no, use this. This person uses and it works. The this the some people will say okay use trap mm for me you are building a two three story building you are asking the contractor to use a trap mm, mm. and the man is telling you the only thing that can do this thing is sixteen mm because of the weight of the of the of the building but here you will say no you want the trap mm because somebody used it for maybe a bungalow and it's still standing so professional advice is a different issue from the morning in circulation okay I, there was a man in Lagos very close to Charlatan they call it Charlatan uh, area in uh, Antony. He got a loan. He mortgaged his two houses in the east and built a hotel in Lagos. When he was building there, the engineer told him that this thing can only take two-story building. Not told the engineer that you, have, you own a house, you live in a rented apartment. I have two buildings. Make this thing eight-story building. After much argument, the engineer said, well, put it in writing so that tomorrow you will not say it's my fault. They built the house, 100% complete. They were to put lift. That is an um, elevator. elevator. They were to put elevator. They were in the building um, trying to map out the position. Then the building made a very terrible noise. The engineer said, look, okay, let us go down first. The man said, no, 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 let's continue. Okay, let us go down first. The man refused. The engineer went out. After about five minutes, he refused to come back. The man got angry and came down, was shouting, harassing the engineer. The second noise came. When the man turned back to look at the building, the building didn't collapse. The building came down. As somebody who was kneeling down, the building came down and became a, 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 a what do they call it, one floor. Mm. The man collapsed. What is the implication? He has lost the two houses he used to mortgage. Yeah. In, 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 a, in, a, in the east, the one in Lagos, he has lost it. You cannot even build a house on top of that place again. Are you going to pull out the building and re, 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 reshape the, the floor? So, the building materials going up, is this because of the cost of demand? The demand for these things are too high. Okay. We are crying that there is no money. But this money is, is concentrated in the hands of those who have no business in the government because their money is coming from different sources that the government cannot trace. All right, let's move to another headline there on the front page of The Guardian. But we're talking about River State right now. It says, Hoodlums disrupt Fubara Supreme Court victory celebration. Comrade, what do you have to say on this? Look, what God has made, God has made. Mm. Allow this man to run his government. With those who are disrupting it, when their own man was dead, nobody disturbed him. When you are moving forward, you don't need to look backward. Because if you look, if you are running and you look backward, definitely you will fall. Mm. Leave what belongs to the man to for the man. Like what they not tell us in those days when we were in secondary school in the Jebode, because that was where I school. They will tell the our vice president will tell us, leave the boarding house for the borders. Allow the man to do what he wants to do. Now the Supreme Court has found this victory. You were saying that the man should not celebrate. Who will not celebrate that type of victory? Whether they stop him or not, will that one reverse the Supreme Court judge a uh, judgment? Mm. The answer is no. So they are just disturbing themselves. And also, let's look at the Vanguard newspaper. And do not forget, the Vanguard is one of the is the major sponsor for the newspaper review here on Quest. And I'm looking at the Vanguard. The major headline there says, "Abducted God is good motives and ABC bosses passengers." It says, "Kidnappers want 15 million naira." To free my wife says one of the victims husbands uh yes more details on this on page seven comrade i know you're itching to react on this but let's take other headlines first of all borrowing senates to raise customs five five point zero seven uh five point zero seven nine trillion naira revenue target is making it to page eight 
and also economic crisis federal government lacks ideas should seek help says labor party I uh, wonder who they're going to seek help from, but you want to know more on that, go to page 9 of the Vanguard. High cost of living, Niger residents protest hunger and shut down major roads. You have a couple of writers to that. The first says, those behind protests out to hijack food trucks coming to Mina from Lagos, says Governor Bago. And also Nantes uh, seeks Tunubu's intervention and issues ultimatum. Can a governor to intimidate Tunubu, or rather, can a governor to imitate Tunubu on hardship, or rather, intimate uh, Tunubu on hardship and hunger in the states, and also hard times over soon, says First Lady, as she tells Nigerians. Well, you can get more stories on this on page five, and that also stands as a picture of the day, as you can see, uh, Niger residents as you know they are protesting. Like I said, more details on that on page five. Moving on to sports, we have history favors Super Eagles over Bafana Bafana. Uh, comrade, I'm sure during your days you would have loved to I'm be. I'm flight on Abidjan. Uh, where? Abidjan. Well, Comrade, I'm, I'm, you, you have your, your boots on. You have your boots ready. I will get one when I get there. Okay, but more details on that on page 31. And also, revisit $3.2 billion outscorn privatization. Armstrong urges uh, Tinubu is making it into page 20. And now, despite uh, regardless of the fact that we've had all of these headlines, let's go to the Mr. and Mrs. column for some comic relief. And then, Mr. is going first well, as I'm usual. That way. Yes, Mr. is going first as usual. It's not ladies first today. Like your young girl. Um, yes, I'm just like when I go by there, sit there. <laughs> Mr. is going first and he says, the food is delicious, but it's not enough. I'm still hungry. I've been drinking water just to fill in. This is the seventh glass. Mm. And then Mrs. replies and says, we're in the Hamatan season. Water is good for the system. Oh, hey, right. that's easy. <laughs> we women, eh? we, we see this one. We study people in the laboratory. Come with the shit the lie. I think she told the lights on lights. There was you no light. There. light and your tummy will be making noise wherever you go. I think the woman. You is, need water for your system, especially is, in this the woman is a season. Bandit. But anyway, we've taken yes the headlines on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper as well as the Punch. And now it's now time for us to analyze some of these headlines, comrade. Ooh. Yes, over to you. Yes, on the front page of the Punch as well as the Vanguard. This is the, the major headline that says kidnappers want 15 million uh, naira to free my wife. And he's coming from a victim's husband. And also here on the Punch, it says a uh, police comb Kogi forest as government abduct 14 Abuja bound travelers. Now, my question is this. We know as at this point that traveling to the north is is risky. Let's put it that way. It's risky because we have this abduction and kidnapping going on you know, in, in a very high manner right over, over there right now. And people are still finding their way all to, the, to the, that, that same location, despite the fact that this is general knowledge. What's your take on this? Definitely. There is no no war in the world that has ever totally wide up a race. Mm. What is going on there is an artificial war. And you cannot tell anybody that it will wipe off everybody. Where some people go and come back with fortune, some people go and come back with coffin. Look, you see, uh, uh, the place, the, the plug where you put your, your your fridge and your fridge becomes cold. Mm -hmm. That's the same place you put your iron and the iron becomes hot. So if you go there and there is not come back, that does not stop other people from going because mm -hmm. in commerce you must travel. What we need to be doing now is how to be security conscious, to be aware of the activities and the antecedents of these people. You know, before people travel, don't travel in the night because then the, the night is risky. I can bet you no arm robber, no kidnappers goes out in the night these days because they are also afraid of themselves too. The, the, the government is not doing enough. Maybe we have to establish an agency or even a complete ministry to take care of these kidnappers. Mm. Let them have an office where they have a location from the federal constitu uh, uh, constitution. Mm. Because we've been living in this condition for so long. Everybody, do, nobody sleeps with even one eye open again, uh, close again. Uh, we, are, we are sleeping with two eyes open. And still no no no, no respite. Mm -hmm. Look at what that just happened in the kitty. They told us that the police and these students, that is the, the security agencies, rescued these uh, these children. But we were told later on that the parents contributed for fifteen million to to rescue the payoff, them. Yeah. And the driver that could not uh, contact anybody for for his own part of the ransom was shot in the presence of these small children and set a place and burnt into ashes. You can imagine the type of situation we we, we live in. And until date, the government is comfortable. Nothing is being done about this thing. This thing is enough to go to war with these bandits. If you, if you, there was which year was that? About three or four years back now, if I can, if I can remember very well. 
when when American citizens was held between the Nigerian and Niger border, you know what happened? Mm. They sent their, 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 their men and they came to rescue him and they took him away. But here we laugh over everything because we will not sit down and start praying as if we are the only country that uh, has uh, spiritual powers. The more we pray, the more things go the other way. Why don't we change our our idea? Now you went and you adopted a whole king. You killed the wife. You you you, 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 you carried the, the, the daughter also, and the, up to date, no news about it. And somebody will sit down and tell us that we are on top of the situation. I am beginning to be fed up and have this terrible headache over this English of we are on top of the so situation. So now that we know that this situation is like this, what's your take on we as citizens bearing arms and protecting ourselves by our Did you watch that film called The Raid on Entebbe? Did you watch it? Or you, I don't think you were born. The Raid on Entebbe, the people sacrificed their lives to save those, uh, those people. And the last man that would have boarded the plane, when they after rescuing the people they could rescue, and the player was living in what the man what the, what did the man do he asked one of his uh, lieutenants to shoot him instead of taking him into uh, captivity by the uh, by the opponent and he was going to he would have faced a very serious uh, punishment and torture and they, he requested to be shot and and he was shot that is how you rescue people you cannot say you could you go and uh, catch a, a bandit somebody carrying ak-47 even carrying a more dreaded weapon we have shotgun we have uh, 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 all these uh, grenades with them you see you could you can catch them and bring them for not even prosecution for de-radicalization and bring them back into the society do you make a pact between the snake and uh, and, and, yes, and the rat? i was going to come to that what's your take on this whole idea of de-radicalization you know because it seems as though well, it doesn't seem that way we already now know that you know when this bandits are caught per se they are taken to correction uh, facilities correction centers and all of that and then put back into the society that is now, the people, have out, people have come out to cry out and say that is not the way to go what's your take on that nobody nobody who has not spoken against this uh, uh, this type of system of governance but the people in government are not listening you know if two persons sit to eat uh, go and uh, like my, my normal proverb you you finish eating a whole grass cutter then you are coming in to tell me that my head is that like that of a grass cutter i will not take it from you nobody is fighting for no cause killing for no cause maiming causing agony like fella said they have they leave sorrow tears and blood wherever they go and you now went and bring that person and said okay please say no more go back into the society say no more go back into the security one of the security agencies and become a, a, a federal security woman being while in some other areas for you to pick somebody's pocket if you face that 20 years jail or 30 years jail what is good for the ghost is good for the gander mm. if the government actually want to tackle this insecurity problem which I know that they don't, we are not prepared to, because I don't know whether they have some motives behind it. If there is no motive behind it, we wouldn't be going through this problem at this time. When this is started in the time of Abbas Sanjay, if you could remember, that was where it started gradually, little by little, till it snowballed to what we are doing now. Somebody said it's the problem of the North. Leave them, let them surprise. But what are we talking about now? They are almost at the other end of the country, which is the, the Atlantic Ocean. Gradually, they have gotten to this position. Now, in, in, in something like this, do not laugh, do not sit on the same roundtable conference to discuss with these people over what will be done. Mm. Tell them that you are government. You have the coercive power to coerce them into submission. Last, two days ago, and it came out yesterday, that they have been able to pinpoint and uh, identify and pinpoint the senator that is in charge of this insecurity by holding meetings with the bandits, the terrorists, the type of meeting they heard, what they discussed, and all these things. But they ended up by saying, Anonymous name with hell. Why are you withholding that name? Mm. Of what, of what, imp of what uh, uh, reason is the government not disclosing that name? Or is it because they have not killed enough? Oh, well, come on, come on, you spoke one on that matter. But let's move on to another headline here on the front page of the God, or the Vanguard, rather. It says a uh, high cost of living. Uh, Niger residents protest hunger and shut down the roads. And also, Governor ba uh, Bago has come out to say those behind the protest, they are out ha to ha hijack food trucks coming to Mina from Lagos. What's your take on this? You see, if you are in a position and somebody criticizes you, do not take that criticism to be an act of uh, uh, trying to undo you. Go and review what the person is saying. A few days ago, one of the former uh, presidential uh, candidates attacked the federal government over these type of issues. And they told him that he's disgruntled, he's suffering from post-election defeat. All types of men were heaped on him. That is not actually the issue. We all know quite well that we are, Nigerians are suffering. Every one of us is is, is suffering and someone is coming to tell you why don't you sit down and look at the situation review it and see whether you are right or wrong even there is nothing wrong if you call the opposition and say look oh, this is where we are what can we do let us get your input no they, they will not say no 
As at today, a bag of rice is about 72, 73,000 million. While you have couple of, I buy my hair on Sunday. I was saying that um, couple of rice is about 5,000. The woman who came to also cut her hair said, look, you are not correct. I bought one just now, 6,000 naira. So if you, if you could buy a couple of 6,000 naira, tell me, if you are a family of six, that is four children and a, a husband and wife, that's the approved constitutional uh, family uh, level, which we are not uh, following actually. And somebody is not telling you that he will pay at the end of the month, he will pay you 40,000, 50,000, 60,000. How can that sustain you? And somebody is crying that we are living at a very perilous period where everything is astronomically high. Transport fare has gone up. Even Nepal, what do they call them now? Don't even they have a, 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 an SCM name now. They've been bacchanized. They are coming to increase their tariff and the, your salary is not being increased. Now the water worsening, they are telling us, mean even 200,000 minimum wage is not enough. The very day the government pronounces 200,000 naira minimum wage, the country will catch fire. Because all the market women will increase their prices immediately. Transporters will increase immediately. Every other social life, uh, uh, amenities will go up immediately. That will swallow up that 200,000. Mm. What am I saying in excess? Do not continuously feed somebody. Try as much as possible to put out investment on Ghana. The output of that investment will be able to feed the people. Mm. So they know that they have something doing. In Delta, where we are, in the whole major Delta region, can you tell me any any monumental investment? But that people look at? that thing. We have been at this this point before. We've had this talk before here, and you know, we've had callers who called in to say, "Are you sure government is listening?" No, look, there is one thing they say that saying and unsaying is an undoing of an old man in the house. Do you understand that proverb? Mm -mm. Okay, no. like us. If you say, if you don't talk, one day they will say, Why did you not tell us? There is nobody who does not listen. It's only that some hearts are desperately wicked. And the, the scripture which, we, which I belong, I don't know whether you belong to that scripture also, that one day the king that knows Joseph will sit on the throne. Because if you don't do all these things, one of them will say we are not aware. Nobody actually informed us. Mm. It happened to me last month when we went somewhere. Somebody said, why did you not make that comment when you were addressing the people? I said, look, I forgot. But you that listened to me, why did you not remind me? He said, he also, also forgot. So I not told the two of us are equally guilty. Mm. He accepted. So we just we should just continue to say it. <laughs> yes. If you say they are not listening, it's a lie. If you are not listening, people are calling in. If that which means they are listening, if you don't hear me, then somebody will tell me, and I will tell somebody, the thing is uh, going on. And if you look at most of what we discuss here, at times, maybe a month later, you will see something related to that that the government is trying to adjust. Mm. They may not call up the, the, the president or the government will not call you directly that. Amelia, oh, so thank you, I'm listening to you. No, no. You need to, you, ah, this program, if I say it on air, it will not go down well at all. Mm -mm. If, you, if, <laughs> if you want to woo, if you want to woo a deaf and dumb lady, you don't talk to her. There is something you need to do that the, the lady will understand that this guy is after me. Well, action, I believe. Exactly. Okay. Well, coming, let's move away from that. All right, let's go over to the international scene right now. We say it's King Charles diagnosed with cancer. Uh, the Buckingham Palace has disclosed that. And also right now, world leaders, including Biden and Sunak, you know, are sympathizing with King Charles. Now, when, when this headline, when I took this headline, the first thing that came to my mind is, well, uh, his 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 mother, the, the, the previous queen, probably spent his <laughs> own reign. <laughs> you know, she actually took the time when she was supposed to rule into her and then she ruled for the both of them. What's your take on this? And you know... Well, yeah, you, cannot, uh, you cannot express this more than what you have said. <laughs> he did not spend his time while uh, in office. Oh yeah, but right um, now, uh, jokes apart, he yeah. has been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, it's quite no, sad. No, no, at, times, at times too, we just need to make some little jokes. Uh, no, mm, actually, yes. it's not a palatable situation. It's not a palatable situation. Because uh, the smile of a goat on top of the fire is not because the goat is palatable. Mm. He has no choice. You know, if you put the goat head on the fire, you will see the goat opening his, uh, the, uh, his mouth and they shining the teeth. But if he has, a, if he has an option, he will get out of that place. But he cannot. Nobody prays for his uh, yes. uh, uh, the other person to, to fall sick. And again, too, uh, my heart goes for him. Yes. And, uh, though age is still not on his side. Yes, age is not on his side at all. Uh, you know, before he came in, many people have argued that let them give it to the son. But it will also be on a... Uh, uh, on ethical, if you have to jump the father to the son, because he's hereditary, mm -hmm. primogenitor by, uh, by by nature, uh, I would pray for him to actually get yes. out of it. But you know, the wise students also don't believe in all these prayers. They believe in what they could do scientifically. Because from, from wise, if you pray, did you hear that lady who was praying for a dying patient in the UK? And they had her praying, they went, all right, do it. 
Please pray for this person. The lady was a second departure. I don't yeah. know whether you have that. Yes, enough. Yes, they believe in what they could do for themselves. But let's see. God's willing. If it is not God's time for him to go, he will survive it. All right, just quickly before we round up things here on the newspaper review, Senate to raise cost on five trillionaire revenue target. Do you think that if this target is actually raised beyond those five trillion naira, that the customs will be able to deliver? If you are into buying and selling business, if they increase the cost of you buying, you increase the cost of your own selling. Mm. So if they make it 10 billion, the cost of 10 trillion, sorry, they, they, they are 5 trillion. Right? 5 trillion naira, yes. If they make it 10 trillion, the, mm. the, the, the customer will also increase their own uh, tariff and inspection rate and every other thing. They will, they will meet the target. Instead of you to be clearing your car for 150,000, they will tell you that it is 250,000. What, what does that now mean for the common man here in the street? Those the, important the meaning cars, is very, those important things, the, goods and commodities into the country. The meaning is very simple. Your cost of buying everything will go up, Miriam, because it's a, it's a spiral binding effect. You are charging me 20,000 to come and do your job. I will charge the best that I will get it from to go and do the for, for some amount because there must be 11 grand. There must be points of equilibrium. You know what it's called? Like, equilibrium. Yes, of course. yes in, in economics. Mm. That meeting point where variable costs must equal uh, fiscal. Any point after that, then you are not talking of break even point analysis. If we get 10 trillion from the custom and the custom increases their tariff, the buyers will pay for that tariff they've increased. The person buying from the buyer, that is the, the middleman now, we will, also, we will also pay at a higher price. So at the point in time, it becomes an incremental uh, issue. And that is what is leading to the introduction of the VAT. You see, value added as at every point in time, you start paying VAT on it. And it will also now come to show up the revenue being made by federal and revenue. And when all these costs are put together, who bears the bond? It is the common man on the street that goes to the market with his little earning that will still pay for all these things. And at the end of the day, if, if care is not taken, social vices will start crippling everything. Social place. vices have already crept in at this point, and we're already seeing some protests like the one in Mina right now and all of that. But uh, let's move away from that. Let's hope that things work out for, for the better here yes, in hoping. the country. Yes, that's our, that's our prayer. Naira weekends at power markets, rise its ads official window. How, how much is a dollar? How much is a dollar to Naira right now? Uh, the last one I have was 1,575. It came down to 1,500 again. Mm -hmm. Because it is like this. It's like when you want to tell somebody good money, you look through the window whether it is actually money. They, nobody predicts what happens to the Naira now. When we leave this place, they will tell you, they, or they may tell you it has gone to 1,700 or it has come down to 1,400. So it's a fluctuating issue. And even the drivers of the economy are not helping matters at all. A university has just been established in Lagos. You know what they did? They put down the, 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 the breakdown of the cost. Everything was in dollars. Up to the water you drink is being costed in dollars. In a country that has their own currency, this is supposed to be even a traceable issue. You are using another man's or another country's currency to run your own economy by downgrading and, and, uh, and uh, depreciating your own local currency. And we are smiling over it. Somebody is able to come out and put this in, in the media that my school fees is twelve thousand dollars the government the government saw it the ministry of education saw it ESC saw it everybody saw it everybody kept quiet and who is the promoter of that uh, university is a seasoned qualified reliable banker let me use that language re re seasoned qualified reliable banker that's supposed to be the custodian of the naira that's supposed to even have a say in the running of the economy through the cbn by advising the cbn governor on what to be done well how do we keep the naira the naira uh, high bring the dollar down a bit but instead they abandoned that one and they are now they, 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 they are now running their own private institution in dollars you need naira to buy those dollars and the more you push Naira to buy the dollar, the dollar will continue to go because it's not because an issue of you using your, your, your Naira to chase the dollar. Yes. Survival of the fittest. Yes. Then tomorrow somebody will say the Naira is depreciating. Why won't the Naira depreciate? Hmm. Looking, at, looking at what we have right now, let's look at this final headline for around things because I know time is not a friend here on a newspaper review anymore. Economic crisis. We've been talking about all, all the headlines we've been talking about up to this moment leads to economic crisis. You know, the federal government lacks ideas, should seek help. This is coming from the Labour Party. What is it? Hmm. I mean, where is the federal government going to seek this help from? What is the solution at this point? Look, let me tell you one thing. The idea they lack that they say they should seek oh. for more We have people in Nigeria here that can see tomorrow. So you see that if we know, of course, we have people here in Nigeria that can see tomorrow, 
Why is the federal government not taking ideas? From because we still play very, very dirty politics. This person is not in my political party. This person is not from my tribe. This person is not from my geographical zone. Or pass on your, uh, sorry, like, well, I'm, if I, if I, end, I, I, I pay for your pardon. Coming. Yes, I understand. Yes. He is now one of the best governments in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He sat down. He looked at, okay, Mweke, you are a very good person in the, the communication. Mweke, you handle this. Uh, Rebabu, you handle Abuja. Erufai, uh, handle this position. He never discriminated. He brought these young boys and of course, the man just sat down in the chair, got down in the office, and started getting reports. Don't you because they are your brothers and your sisters and give them positions. Give the technocrats. Contract this government. Give them technocrats. Give them targets. Then sit down and tell them give you a report. At the end of the day, you become the best chairman. All right. Comrade, you have spoken well today. I'm quite glad I came on air with you today. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on air today. I do look forward to having you as usual. Uh, so you come next Tuesday because I don't think I'm going to be on air here again. I'm going to be on the radio. So yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. And yes, thank you everyone for keeping it real here for sticking with Quest Television. But from myself, from my crew, from Comrade Ifeo Domo, the Honourable Bishop, we say have a lovely day and bye for now. <laughs>